are you doing today? Does your five hole smell like the north end of a southbound skunk? All right, if you're getting beat a lot through the five hole, there's several things we have to address. Number one, your off ice fitness, your ability to generate power with your hips. We're gonna work on that today with Brent, five exercises you can do to improve your knee drive and help close up your five hole. There's some on ice stuff though that we do have to address to improve your knee drive and to prevent getting hosed. We actually have an on ice test where you can see where you compare to other people. Also, if you're getting improvement from one month to the next when you're working on your knee drive. First thing we have to talk about is the release. The man holding an open stick, is he holding a closed stick? Is he using a mature shooting pattern, an immature shooting pattern? And where are your eyes? Are you fully locked on the stick puck relationship? Are you relying upon your peripheral vision to assess hand movements, any other lead ups, any tells, any giveaways? Let's get right into it and figure out how to close that crappy five hole you have. All right, one thing we've got to be very cognizant of when a guy is shooting, if we want to seal our five hole, is a stick puck relationship. Is the stick open, facing at the net, ready to shoot it? Not a lot of warning. Does the man have the puck pushing to the front so he's in a deking position? This is a closed stick position. Hard to go five hole here until you either open it up on the forehand or open it up on the backhand. Another thing we have to understand, is the guy using a mature shooting pattern or immature? And here's what it looks like. Immature shooting patterns when the puck starts way behind the guy, he brings it forward and then he shoots it. And we'll see when we shoot on Logan, that gives him enough warning to trigger an e-drive. Or do they get the puck way out in front of them, right off their front foot and without warning, just pump the puck. That's a mature shooting pattern. So immature, when they put the puck behind them, bring it in and then release it, which allows you time to trigger your knee drive. A lot easier for five hole saves. Or is a puck out in front of them with an open stick and no warning. So when we're talking about the release and trying to close our five hole, we gotta be very mindful of, is it a mature shooting pattern where the guy comes in, pucks in front of his body and he shoots it without warning? Or is it one where the guy comes in in a minor hockey format, you'd see this in U10, U11 type players, where the puck's behind their body, they load it up, and then they shoot it. That gives you enough warning to get your knee drive down. A couple other things. When a guy's shooting it here, our primary vision should be locked on the stick puck relationship, but our peripheral vision should be watching up here because hands trigger a release. They give it away. So if you can use the corner of your eyes, your peripheral vision, you can sense that release before it even happens. So primary focus on the puck and the stick puck relationship. And then your secondary focus are the corner of your eyes. What are the hands doing? Are they giving it away that a release is about to happen? So that's it. Let's seal up your five hole. Here's what I got, Logan. I've got these pylons measuring four feet little gaps from right at the lip of the crease all the way out here to the far one. Four feet gapped out. So let's come up to the yellow one there. And we're going to assess how quickly you can drive your knees. And a great way to test that is to set some benchmarks. So we're going to use a mature shooting pattern, which we'll demonstrate first. So normally what happens, we got to puck this distance, pucks out in front of me. I want you to drive your knees as soon as I release the puck. It's a violent knee drive, I love it. And at this depth, this test reveals, here's his comfort zone for his knee drive. It's not going in there. Now, move that puck away from your feet for a second. Now watch this. If I use an immature shooting pattern, where I start the puck behind me, and then I bring it forward, you can knee drive on that all day long because the shooter's telegraphing it. So let's see what happens now as we assess his knee drive. Let's move four feet forward, a little bit closer. We're using the mature shooting pattern now. Not a lot of reaction time. But watch, even when the guy is in that tight, if he uses an immature shooting pattern, you get the knees down all the time. 
And that's a message to some of you shooters out there. Don't start the puck behind you. Bring it in. The guy will need to ride that all day long. Here's a mature shooting pattern again, and let's test his knee drive. Excellent. Last one. That's important. And let's check out your ceiling and your butterfly. Dropped your butterfly. One thing we've got to have going here, you can see how he's got the pads overlapped. We got things backed up in behind there where we can tuck our heels to our butt if we need to and bring our knee plates in. That's how you seal up a butterfly, either with a full flare or a wide flare. All right, Brent, we're back at her. We're gonna try to improve goalies five hole. We're gonna work on knee drive. And you know, some people may think gravity, we can't improve our knee drive. Yes, we can. Absolutely. And we wanna have goaltenders that have a violent knee drive so they can stop Austin Matthews when he's shooting through their five hole. Simple. 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 So what five exercises do we have today, Brent? So we're gonna look at the exercises in a 360 degree uh, perspective. You know, Steve, as we spoke about in previous uh, interviews, but touching on the exercises that we've done, we gotta look at different elements of fitness as we're introducing these exercises. Sure, we wanna create violent knee drive, we wanna create the ability to get up and get down in the crease to move laterally more efficiently. But ultimately, a lot of these things aren't gonna be possible until we can basically look at that 360 degree perspective of mobility, strength, power output, figuring out imbalances and how well your body moves and really kind of determine and what exercises are going to fit well within a program to, to kind of tackle that, that method. So first exercise we're going to take care of is called a landmine lateral sway. So the landmine lateral sway is just a simple wide stance transition. We're moving side to side through a very lateral movement, working on just weight tr transition and weight distribution throughout the movement, keeping the core nice and strong and really kind of activating the upper back, uh, the traps, the mid traps and working on engaging and retracting the shoulder blades. So it's just a nice little exercise to really kind of open up the hips, the groin, the adductors and abductors and really kind of get the goalie moving early in the program because again, without that mobility, without those movement tendencies and the ability to move freely, we can take those knee drives and throw them out the window because we're not really optimizing movement. So like anything in a program, if we were kind of implementing a, a dynamic warm-up or a functional warm-up, uh, this is something that we may include as a, as a part of that early transition into the uh, workout. Uh, second exercise we're looking at is a single leg RDL Zerker. So basically we're getting into a landmine. Landmine is a, a bar based position that comes off the ground. Uh, and we're going to use some of the leverage of the landmine to really teach athletes not only that importance of the single leg stance and that, that stability on single leg, we can also kind of tweak the exercise a little bit as we're moving through to create greater knee drive and greater hip mobility. So just an excellent overall exercise to build posture mobility, um, hip drive and knee drive and just kind of concentrating on just being balanced and more stable through both sides of the body. third exercise we're going to do is something called a bear to pike. Uh, so a lot of the times in the fitness industry we hear the kind of key term glute activation. We all use it a lot. Uh, myself and all our trainers here definitely use it a lot. But one thing is with goalies that's often undermined or underused is the ability to kind of use your adductors and your adductors as a part of movement and again as a part of that violent knee drive and the ability to close up gaps. It's extremely important to have that and to also be able to have that for injury prevention. So this specific exercise kind of utilizes a foam roller starting in a bear position we're going to move into a pike. The purpose of the foam roller basically is it goes in between your legs and with that foam roller between your legs it's forcing you and giving you the ability to focus on something to squeeze and to hold during the motion of the pike. So we're, we're focusing on again tackling some of those adductors, working on some hamstring and high uh, hip flexibility as we move through the top of the pike. It's just a really nice exercise and again something that a lot of goalies can almost incorporate as a part of their dynamic warm-up at the beginning of a workout. Fourth exercise, we're going to do something called a 90-90 Copenhagen. It's an isometric exercise based on working kind of like a nice hold on your side. So you'll see through the transition and the movement that, that we do as a part of this uh, uh, demonstration is that when you're in your side isometric hold, you don't just pop up and hold yourself like you would per se in like a side plank position. With the 90-90 leg uh, positioning, we're bringing in again a lot of your adductors and uh, abduction holding positions. So we're kind of really again stressing a lot of those areas where goalies tend to be weaker. And just going back to what I what 
what I said in the beginning. We, you know, we know that ultimately what we're trying to do is create power through these movements, create that knee drive. But again, we could do plyometrics till the cows come home, which tends to be a really popular method nowadays. But plyometrics aren't going to create a lot of that ability to knee drive and be more powerful through that knee drive until you have the ability to move more freely, more efficiently, with more stability, more control, and to prevent injuries, right? So again, going back to it, we're really just trying to uh, isolate and maneuver and, and focus on uh, basically full body kind of control, full body stability, and the ability to just kind of hold yourself in strong positions. So the final exercise is a single leg uh, box step over. And so ultimately we're working, again, going back to what I was saying there, the, as you'll see through a lot of these exercises, there, we're demonstrating one method in these five exercises. Each of these five exercises probably has hundreds of offset variations that you can make with them, which we'd love to show you if you want to come on down to Precision Fitness Performance Center. So come on down and we can kind of show you those, some of those variables and some of those changes and, and we can tweak your body in ways that you can't do by checking out an online program or watching a YouTube video.